This video is going to review chapter 3 from our AIS textbook. We're only going to focus on one particular aspect of this chapter, specifically flowcharts. There are more in here, but in the context of this class, I think it makes the most sense just to focus on kind of a high-level flowchart. In practice, the tools and techniques used for making flowcharts will vary pretty broadly based on your organization. So we're going to kind of focus on a high level. How do you use a flowchart to show some kind of process? Now, why is this necessary? All right, so first off, as an accountant, you need to be able to read documentation to understand how a system works. A flowchart is a standard way of documenting kind of a high level view of how a process works in an organization. You can also use a flowchart for specific computer processes and programming, uh, but you'll probably end up more looking at it from a system documentation viewpoint. There are laws in place that require management to assess internal controls. So, Practically what this means is that you as an accountant or as an auditor, either external or internal, are going to come in and try to understand how a process works in order to make sure you can put controls in place and those controls are actually effective. So when you have flowcharts, it's an effective way of identifying how does this process work and then helps you think through how to deal with exceptions or flaws in the process. You can also use it to document system when you talk about programming, um, but we're going to focus a little bit less on that. So what is a flowchart? A flowchart is trying to give you a view of how a process works. So we say what comes into the system, what comes out of the system, what steps of processing are being done, and how are we storing the data. We also will record some of the data flows as well as decision steps. Decision steps are very helpful for tracking problems in a process. It forces you to think through, all right, so if this doesn't work, how do we respond to that and how do we capture that information? Flowcharts can be a nice way of documenting a process. They tend to get a little overwhelming at some point though, um, and you'll see as we start to flowchart actual processes in the class. Uh, they are an effective technique, but you have to sort of work with them to get the right scale. You will also find that you can write these flowcharts from different levels. You can write them either from a very low level, very granular, or can do very high level. There are a variety of commonly used symbols. We're not going to deal with all of them in this particular course. I'm going to kind of ask you to focus on a couple key elements here. So first off, you should know what the symbol for a document is. This is any kind of item that we think might print out, report, that kind of thing. We're also going to do a processing symbol to show that something's going to happen. And we're not going to really distinguish between computer versus manual. I'm just going to do kind of a high level view. We might also hit a database level to kind of show where you store something into a data system. And then lastly, we'll use and start, stop, or page connectors, as well as this document flow. So we're not going to overdo with the symbols. You can get really, really fancy and complicated here, but I want to focus on kind of a high-level basic approach. Here's a nice, simple example of a flowchart for purchasing coffee. You'll see we have a start and end connector at the upper left and lower right of the screen. And again, if we look back at our thing here, you can see we can use this as on-page connectors. Um, that's fine. You can also just use a simple terminal. Again, in this class, we're going to be really simple, so I'm just going to combine the on-page connectors and the terminal points just to make it really, really straightforward. So we have our start symbol. We have our end symbol. We have our process. So we start by standing in line. Now, this is a real scenario. So we say, all right, if we have to wait too long, then we're going to have a different thing happen. If our wait is over five minutes, we're just going to abandon the coffee and go to class uncaffeinated and unhappy. If, however, it's not, we're going to continue and actually place our order here. So key thing for decision points, our decision points should be this sort of uh, you know, parallelogram shape. We have one line coming in and two or more lines coming out on either side. If we look at a normal process, a normal process has only an input and an output, or you can have multiple inputs, um, but each, each process should have only one output. Anytime you want to have a sort of a branch, you need to have one of these decision points. Okay, so we go ahead and we place our order. We then get a receipt. And again, you can see we're using a different symbol here to kind of show that it's a piece of paper. Then we're going to stand in line and wait for our coffee, receive the coffee. Now, sometimes things go wrong. So if it's the correct drink, good, we're done. If not, we're going to go back. We're going to ask the barista for some help, go back, stand in line, receive our new coffee, and hopefully that gives us the correct drink. 
Now, when you think about this process, there's a couple of things you might want to document for controls. So let's start with the first one, wait over five minutes. One example of a control you may want in a system that supports this kind of process is tracking if you're losing customers because they're waiting too long in line. So you might want to have some sort of measure for seeing how many people come in and wait in line and then leave. That could be a barista hitting a button somewhere to tag something. It could be maybe uh, you have audio video cameras. It could just be literally asking people saying, hey, are, you, are we losing customers or not? But you want to have some process for tracking these people who leave without that. Secondly, you have your other process. Are you making the correct drink? So with this, you might need to think about some sort of process in a computer. Maybe when the order was placed, the wrong information was recorded. In which case, the excuse me step, you have to go back, change the order in the system, reprint the label, and then they have to stand in line again and then receive the coffee again. Or it could be that they did get the correct drink, but you, there's something wrong with the drink. I mean, there's a lot of different exceptions you can kind of think of at this process. But you think in terms of from the system perspective, how do you deal with the exceptions with problems with the drinks? Now, there are some kind of hints for drawing flowcharts. So first off, you got to understand what is the system you're actually doing. This is probably something where you're going to sit down with someone who knows the system and actually design it next to them. We want to identify what are the major processes, documents, data flows, and procedures for each of these processes. Now, in this, we're being pretty granular. Um, you wouldn't probably need to put like the whole stand in line in an actual system. Um, it depends on kind of what you're trying to program and what perspective you have. There's really no like one right way of doing it. It really comes down to what's useful for you to understand the process. It is helpful to sort of read it like a document. So you want to go from top to bottom and you want to go from left to right. We want to label everything. If you can't fit on a single page, use the page connectors. And then you're going to do a lot of editing and reviewing of it. So with this system over here, just trying to get it all to lay out nicely on the page, I rearranged it once or twice and just kind of played with it. OK, let's talk about how to actually create one of these inside of PowerPoint. How do you make a simple data diagram? Now, I like doing it in PowerPoint. You can also do it in Word. That works, too. We're going to insert a new slide. And often, you have to choose the layout to say, I don't want anything on here. In other words, I don't want a title and all the other nonsense. So we go to Layout and just choose Blank. I can go to the Insert menu or the Home menu. And I have a whole bunch of options over here under Drawing. If I click the down arrow, you'll see I have all the flowchart pieces here. So I'm going to start with just a simple circle. And again, you could use a terminator if you want to be fancy as well. Just grab that here. I'm going to have my start and my end. I'm going to copy and paste it on either side. And then I'm going to tag one with start, another one with end. Again, just double clicking on them. Let's put a basic process in. So I'm going to grab a basic rectangle. And again, you can just click on it and kind of see the processes here. But you see we have process, alternate process, decision, all kinds of stuff. So we'll do a simple process. Maybe uh, get paper. Let's do another one. Again, you can click up here if you want. It has sort of like the you know the most commonly used ones check paper, you know, whatever it is. And let's insert a decision point. Is paper good? All right. So we have a couple of processes. Um, now at this point too, something that might make your job a little bit easier is instead of doing that button for the each time, you can just grab one and copy and paste it a couple of times and then just change the text. Get A2 paper and then drag it to wherever you want it to be. Now, when you drag it, try to drag it with your cursor on the actual line. If you drag from little dots, then you make it bigger or smaller. And if you click in the middle, it's often you'll just select the text. So it's best to make sure your cursor is kind of near the edge, where you have this little icon of a sort of four-pointed star. Now, after you have a bunch of these, you might want to decide to change the style. So I can select them all go to my shape format, and then choose some kind of fill for them as well. We also might decide we want the fonts too big, so we can make the font smaller as well, just to make it a little bit easier to get all of the stuff on the single page. All right, once you kind of arrange them all so they're in a good shape, then we're going to go ahead and start adding our lines. 
throughout this. And I like saving the lines till the end because I think it makes it a little bit faster. So we're going to grab our lines, insert it, and again, feel free to copy and paste just to make life a little bit easier for you. And then it helps make the resulting document look more consistent because you have the same exact length and angle or your shape. If you need to tweak it a little bit, you can grab the little dot, white dot at the end, stick it in the thing you want. All right, I'm going to have two outcomes here. The first one, I'm just going to go to the end. And second one, I want to have go back up to get paper. Now, this is when it starts getting into kind of design elements. You try not to have lines run right across the top of another one. You could go ahead and send it to the back. But again, it, it's a little bit harder to see when you start doing a whole bunch of lines like that. One alternative is to use this option up here. We have these, these elbows. And the basic idea is you have some sort of you know, circle like this. And then you can sort of modify and tweak as you like, try and make it easier to see. And you can drag the pieces around and try and make it go in other directions. The other way you can work on this is do just a normal black line with no actual elbow. And then I do a couple of these, go back to home, and then just connect them to each other and make the last one an actual arrow. Okay, now that we have all the document shapes placed, let's add some text. I'm gonna click up here, text box, click once on my page, and then just type in whatever I want. I add one on the left-hand side as well for no, and then I can drag and move these around and put them on the right lines to sort of document how the system's gonna work. Anyway, that's a brief overview of how to use flowcharts and the sort of approach we'll use in this class is a real simple approach, um, try to make it very straightforward. In the real world, this gets a lot more complicated and you'll probably end up using the standards from whatever firm you end up working for. So there are more, more formal ways, but for now, this is simple enough to get the concept across.